I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is a bonus episode of News Du Jour. Hey everyone and welcome to another bonus episode as part of my maternity leave special series. So today we are continuing on with our special series focused on women's safety and women's cases that still need justice and we are keeping this a very wide umbrella because at the end of the day the woman we're going to talk about today wasn't a woman. She was a little girl and You know, it hurts to my core to have to discuss something so awful happening to such a young person, Um, but it's important that we talk about these cases, raise awareness, and really try to find answers for these families who have been hurting for such a long time. So let's jump into the case of Georgia Leah Moses. So I actually chose this as one of the first cases in our series about women's safety because of the emphasis on, quote unquote, say her name. Following the death of an innocent black person, it's often chanted to say their name so as not to forget that this was an actual human being with a personality, a life and a story, not just a statistic. But in this particular case, the media actually got her name wrong. Georgia Leah was known as Georgia Lee in the press, and it never got corrected. Even on her grave, it says Georgia Lee Moses. That is absolutely heartbreaking to me. And It's not uncommon in cases about women of color for the media to distort the facts or just blatantly get them wrong like this. These cases are so often misrepresented or simply underrepresented, and that's a big part of what we are looking to correct with this podcast series. In this case, they also got a huge fact wrong in another area, They painted Georgia as a prostitute when, in fact, Georgia was 12 years old when she was murdered, far from the age of consent. You can't be a prostitute if you are a child, only trafficked. She was abused and had unreasonable responsibilities on her shoulders pretty much from day one, but it was not initially painted that way. It was described as if she had made poor decisions when, from what I can tell, little Georgia did everything right to step up and help her family as the oldest sister. So Georgia and her younger sister Angel grew up with a mom named Ida who suffered from both bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Angel describes her mom as someone who cared deeply for them and wanted to take care of them, but simply wasn't able to. Georgia, long before the age of 12, was the one who paid the bills and balanced the family's budget. She stepped up and made sure that the three of them were fed and cared for, despite everything. I don't know about you guys, but (laughs) I can barely pay bills and balance a checkbook today (laughs) at age 31, and I certainly could not have at age 12. I can say that right now with (laughs) complete certainty. Georgia's friends described her as their therapist, quote unquote, and they all leaned on her for support, and she seemed to support really everyone around her. They said that she stood up to bullies for smaller kids, 
that she was brave, y'all, that she loved to laugh. She loved to make others laugh. She grocery shopped for her family. She did the laundry. She taught Angel how to swim. Eventually, in the sixth grade, she was told that, or she told her school that she simply had too many responsibilities at home to participate in school anymore, which is just completely heartbreaking to me. And the school did nothing about it. And this really led to the media's narrative that Georgia was a troubled teen when she never even made it into her teen years. But after years that Georgia spent leading her household as a child, her mom got a new boyfriend. When this boyfriend eventually made unwanted advances on Georgia, she told him no and kicked and he kicked her out of the house. With nowhere to go, Georgia began began living with friends who eventually started trafficking her. She went missing after a party. Georgia's mom didn't even realize she had been missing for nine days. There was no search for her, no police knocking on doors. Her remains were simply found by accident. She was left nude in a field. And here's where the media immediately began to get things wrong because Georgia, at age 12, stood five foot four inches tall. And she was immediately deemed to be a woman rather than a child. And that's what got reported. You have to remember that initially, no one knew who she was. So I think that definitely, you know, created the confusion because I'm five foot two. So, you know, at the end of the day, she was the height of a grown woman. It took them a minute to put things together because, again, They believed that this was a grown woman that they had found, but it turns out a few months back, there had been a report that a child sex offender was living in a home with children, and wouldn't you know, that child sex offender was the mom's new boyfriend. So police went there actually to do a welfare check. They asked where Georgia was, And it was only then that the family realized it had been too long since they had seen her and that she was likely missing. At this point, they filed the missing person's paperwork, but the police were still pretty focused on Angel's safety, you know, with the mom's boyfriend in the home with her. And they ended up removing Angel from her home and putting her into the system. This was extremely traumatic from from Angel's perspective because the thing is she was really close with her sister and her sister would make an effort to reach out to her and see her on a regular basis even though they didn't live together anymore. And so she was really confused as to where her sister was and she did notice that her sister had been missing for nine days and she is now the one really leading the fight today to find answers about what happened to her sister. It was there while she was in the foster care system that Angel found out that her beloved big sister, the only guardian that she'd ever known, was gone. It was determined from Georgia's autopsy that Georgia was strangled to death and was sexually assaulted. The night that she went missing, Georgia was headed out to a party like I mentioned. She was last seen with a man that she knew who would often page her to meet up. He's described as six foot tall, three inches, African-American in his early to mid 20s at the time of her disappearance. So he would actually be in his 40s now. At the time, he weighed about 200 pounds. He had a short fade haircut, a mustache, was driving a four door white car, and he was likely from San Francisco. Georgia went missing on August 22nd, 1997 in Petaluma, California. Her body was found in a field, like I mentioned, sort of a grove of trees off the highway. At the time that she went missing, she was five foot tall, four inches, and approximately 120 pounds. She had her hair in braids, and she was wearing jeans and a white t-shirt with a white 
nylon windbreaker when she went missing. But again, unfortunately, she was found nude. There is currently a $25,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest in her case. And when we say her name, you guys, let's make sure that we get it right. It's Georgia Leah Moses, who will forever be 12 years old. I can't recommend enough listening to the podcast. They called her Georgia Lee created by Georgia's little sister, Angel, to help find justice for Georgia. Angel, with her friend Maria by her side, is leading the fight for answers now, 25 years later, now that she's a grown woman and still does not have any answers from the police. And I really want to emphasize here that, you know, With these cases that we cover, we're not going super in-depth, obviously, but we're giving you all the facts of the case and the basic premise of what happened, the basic timeline, so that you guys can go and do more research and get connected and get involved in these cases and just raise awareness. I really hope that you will click on some of the links in our show notes. You know, we're going to provide photos of what she looked like at the time, um, all of the websites that might be relevant. Instagram accounts you can follow to get involved with the case, things of that nature. So definitely check out our show notes and our call to action today would just be to listen to the They Called Her Georgia Lee podcast and to dive into this case a little bit more and consider sharing her picture and more about her case on your social media. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider becoming a patron of our podcast. For $7.99 a month, you can unlock tons of perks like breaking news text messages so that you're never out of the loop. Tons of bonus episodes are already up there ready for you to binge and a discussion board full of networking opportunities and much more. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash sugar-free media today to become a patron. This is the best way to support our show. Our patrons make news du jour possible. But a couple other ways to support our podcast are rate and review on whatever podcast platform you use to listen, share on your social media, you have influence, tell your friends, family, and colleagues that you love news du jour and why you listen. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram, just sugarfreemedia, all one word on TikTok, and sugarfree underscore media on Twitter. We also have a weekend newsletter called Dreamers Digest that's full of dreamy content recommendations for your weekend and a life update from yours truly. Sign up today on our website, www.sugarfreemedia.co. Our music is by Joey Lavoy and Nicholas Foster. Our cover art is by Hannah Pierce Photography. Our Sugar Free Media logo is by Katherine Jezik Designs. Any twinkling or little footsteps you might hear in the background are by my dog, Red. He's a rescue pup and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh, oh.